Welcome to Gumby TV and an opportunity to see interview three with my special guest this week, Dr. David Allen, a former heart surgeon and world authority on cannabis medicine. Now today we're going to really get into the good stuff. I'm going to ask the good doctor some really controversial questions and uh, I think we'll get some really interesting answers from them. So my first question for you, Dr. Allen, is about the, the assertion that I'm hearing more and more from scientists and physicians that most of the diseases that we see today are the result of cannabis deficiency. That's right. I know prominent scientists and distinguished doctors that are convinced that it is the removal of cannabis as an edible and as a, 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 a oral medicine, as a smoked medicine. It's the removal of cannabis from our life that has created an epidemic of disease, of cancer, even uh, the disease of obesity, all, all seem to relate to this master control mechanism, the endocannabinoid system, and its ability to create balance, homeostasis, in the variety of physiological functions that make up our human body. Now, Dr. Allen, is this really true? Can it really be true that so many of these diseases that we face today are the result of not getting enough cannabinoids in our diet? The endocannabinoid system controls virtually all physiology. And uh, we're finding out that it controls uh, glucose metabolism, if you use cannabis for 20 years or more, the chances of you getting adult onset diabetes mellitus is 66% less. And no other chemical on the earth does this. So it controls glucose metabolism. We're learning it also controls fatty metabolism. And they've proven that people with cancers have lower numbers of functioning end, uh, cannabinoid receptors. There seems to be some kind of link with, with the endocannabinoids and cancer. And so we're in the infancy of this study. Um, uh, we're finding out that, that endocannabinoids affect uh, seizure activity and all kinds of spastic activity. So, so uh, uh, there's, there's uh, diseases like Duvet syndrome, which is a... Uh, a disease where uh, children are having four and five hundred seizures a week and are completely unresponsive to all pharmaceutical medicines, even experimental pharmaceuticals. And they can give these patients a little cannabinoid uh, or cannabidiol tincture and it stops their seizures and the children begin communicating when they've never done this before. So uh, the endocannabinoid system uh, is, is so complex that, we're, that the humans are really not educated enough to really n to study it right now. And there's political repression of this study. The uh, United States government has a patent on cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants. Uh, it's patent number 6,630,507, cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants. And in this patent that came out in, in uh, 2003, it uh, shows that uh, cannabidiol decreases the size of a stroke by 50%. And no other chemical does this. Uh, and so this is like a miracle that cannabidiol would decrease the size of a stroke. And they talk about a bunch of the different mechanisms that this occurs by. There's other patents that show the same thing happens in heart attacks 
that the heart scar after a myocardial infarction is 66% less after cannabidiol um, um, administration. So uh, the sum of what all of this knowledge seems to be is this. This medicine called cannabis is more than a pharmaceutical. It's not a pharmaceutical. It's a nutraceutical. It's, a, it's, it's not just a pharmaceutical. It's something that your body needs on a daily basis and it will protect you from all kinds of diseases. It'll protect you from uh, diabetes. It'll protect your heart. It'll protect your, your brain. And, uh, and if you eat cannabis raw, you get the acid forms of the cannabinoids. And these seem to have great antioxidant effects. And in the near future, uh, people will be eating raw cannabis in their food, in, um, in breakfast cereals, in smoothies. You could put it on a peanut butter sandwich, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, the, the cannabis tastes fairly bad, and uh, uh, if you have to hide the flavor of it. But if you, can, if you can consume this raw, it will protect your grandmother from a stroke. And um, so this is a nutraceutical that people should eat on a daily basis. Well, that's fascinating. But tell me this, Dr. Allen. You and I have had some discussion, and you have some pretty radical views that I happen to agree with about the future of heart surgery and, and treating people with heart disease. I'd uh, appreciate it if you'd take a minute and tell us about that. As a cardiac surgeon, uh, my job was to protect the heart from oxidative stress. And uh, what happens is there's a phenomenon called reperfusion injury. And whenever you stop blood flow to an organ and then uh, reestablish oxygen uh, flow to that organ, what happens is the oxygen disassociates and becomes oxygen-free radicals and actually worsens any kind of a heart attack that you have. So one of my jobs was is to protect the heart from oxidative damage. And it occurs when you, not when you're working on the heart, basically it occurs when you open the cross clamp and allow the fresh blood to come back into the heart. That's when the damage occurs. And so in the near future, cardiac surgeons will be given uh, synthetic cannabinoids or maybe um, plant cannabinoids that have been uh, uh, purified, they will be giving these cannabinoids to patients before they go on bypass to protect their heart from reperfusion injury. Now, uh, another point is um, we found out that brain tumors are um, inhibited um, by uh, cannabis uh, because what can, they found out that cannabis or cannabidiol and THC both in, inhibit this substance called vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF. And VEGF is uh, produced by the body whenever there's low oxygen uh, states. And VEGF also um, heals the inside of arteries whenever there's damage. So it heals the endothelium of the artery. And uh, it causes blood vessels to grow into areas of low oxygen perfusion. And so uh, certain tumors of the brain, gliomas, secrete this vascular endothelial growth factor. And if when they secrete this, uh, it causes blood vessels to grow into the tumor and the tumor enlarges by that mechanism. Well, they found out that since THC and, and cannabidiol inhibit uh, VEGF, that it decreases the size uh, of the tumor and, and, and some gliomas are actually killed by starving them from blood supply by this mechanism. And so... Uh, 
I wrote, also wrote a paper about how coronary stents may possibly be kept open by cannabinoids. And if cannabinoids inhibit vascular endothelial growth factor, whenever a cardiologist uh, puts a stent in a coronary artery, what they do is they, uh, this metal stent opens the artery and it makes uh, small cuts in the wall of the artery and, and the balloon allows the artery to expand uh, after these cuts are made. And the uh, vascular uh, endothelium um, heals the artery by uh, sending the scar over these, these little cuts. And in a large uh, percentage of cases, this healing process is over exuberant and the scarring continues and continues until the uh, the lumen of the artery is completely closed by scar so it's it's called re instant restenosis and they have a lot of different uh, chemicals that they give patients to prevent this now plavix is one of the major chemicals that they give patients to to keep this artery from this healing process from closing off the artery. And Plavix is a very dangerous medicine. So it's my um, theory that if uh, cannabidiol inhibits vascular endothelial growth factor, that it probably would also inhibit it when uh, the artery starts to heal itself, that it actually by inhibit, inhibiting VEGF, uh, cannabis and your endocannabinoid system may keep your uh, coronary stent open longer. Well, as you can see, Dr. David Allen is a pretty amazing guy. And the science and medicine of the endocannabinoid system is certainly one of the great discoveries of the last hundred years. And it's a discovery that's being fought every step of the way. Well, we know that this is real. And we can use this medicine right now to make ourselves healthy and strong. I mean, I'm 66 years old. And I don't feel or look 66 years old. And I can tell you, I've smoked about 10 one gram joints for most of my adult life, 12 grams a day. So I think I represent at the sort of the more extreme end what cannabis can do to the human body. And what it does is it offers the fountain of youth. It offers health, clarity, vitality. You know, I just saw a study that says that cannabinoids cleanse the brain and actually heal damage that has occurred in the brain. And so people who smoke pot on a regular basis may have a little trouble with uh, remembering something while they're really high. But through their older years, they will continue to remain clear and lucid while their friends who are on alcohol and pharmaceuticals become more and more obviously mentally impaired. By the way, I've always liked the um, uh, I've always likened the uh, the problem that we have with Congress in, in, in that uh, the the problem with the marijuana laws is that they're all being made by alcoholics, the alcoholics that binge drink and characterize the typical congressman or senator. So. We have the answer. We have a medicine that works. We have something that provides health and youth for many, many years versus something that's being forced upon us by a, a, a government that doesn't understand or want to understand the emerging science and medicine of the endocannabinoid system. Well, that about wraps it up. Join me here tomorrow, and I'll see you then. The
so heavy where I stand. 